What is going on, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Trading to Glory. This is episode number 25, and in today's episode, we will be covering Team of the Week number six, my favorite investments from this Team of the Week. Also, the UCL cards, another follow-up video for our UCL investments, and also talking about Scream card once again, and maybe dabbling into what the market's going to be like throughout this next month as a whole, especially now that we are less than one month away from Black Friday. Now, it's important not to panic for Black Friday, all right? We've still got time. That's still a long way away. This game has not even been out for a full month yet, to put that in perspective. So we are still about a full month away from Black Friday, which will be on November 23rd. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's basically a big promotion. It causes the first market crash of the year. But we'll talk about that a little bit at the end, not very much. Let's go ahead and get into my favorite investments from Team of the Week 6, guys. Um, if you guys are enjoying this weekly series where I go over the Team of the Week, make sure to drop a like on the video. We're going to shoot for 712 likes. 712, can we hit that? That would be awesome. So let's start up top with the big guys like Lewandowski. So it's important to remember, and the reason I kind of brought up Black Friday is because that will relate to some of these bigger investments. How will they be affected by the Black Friday market crash? So for these big investments like Lewandowski, we're going to go ahead and throw Martial in there. We're going to go ahead and maybe throw in Mahrez as well. So all these investments, those big guys in this team of the week, what I suggest is they're going to follow this pattern. What will happen is there will be a pre-crash to Black Friday. It'll be people preparing for a crash, which causes a crash in itself. It's called the crash before the crash. If you guys have played FIFA, you know exactly what that is and what to expect from it. And those cards will drop, despite the fact that they'll go out of packs this upcoming Wednesday. People will sell the cards to liquidate their club so that they have coins ready to buy during Black Friday, whether it be SBCs, whether it be investing in cards that drop because of all the packs that get open, etc., etc. People will sell their cards whether they're in packs or not. But once Black Friday actually hits, Black Friday means more coins in the game. That means more coins in people's accounts, more buying power for them, it means they can afford more cards. And with all the demand that's going to be throughout that week, these cards, previous team of the weeks, are going to go up in price overall. So what I would do is I would wait to buy Lewandowski, wait to buy Maros, wait to buy uh, Martial in any card similar to them until the pre-crash hits. Once the pre-crash hits, these are the cards you want to focus on. Not players like Gold Gareth Bale. Not players like Gold Dybala. Not gold players that will be in packs during Black Friday necessarily, but cards that won't be in packs during Black Friday, but still crash because of the pre-crash. Because one, there will be a lot of demand for cards like Bale and Dybala and all that during Black Friday, but on top of that, there will also be a lot of supply. So even though I think Bale and Dybala will rise after Black Friday, they definitely will. I'm 100% sure they will. It happens like that. That's how a market crash works. It will recover afterwards. And these Bale cards that drop before and right at the beginning of the, of the events, they rise back up. It happens every single time. But because there's a supply of those cards in packs as well with all those 100k packs, 50k packs, 35k packs every freaking hour with those lightning rounds, there's also going to be a lot of supply, which will kind of prevent those cards from rising quite as much as players like this Lewandowski, this Anthony Martial. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, just ask a question down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. So let's go down to the midfield here where we have Vecino as a center mid from uh, Inter Milan. And this card isn't terrible. It's got all stats 72 and above. It is from Uruguay, though. It's a tough link. So unless you're making a squad out of Calcio A cards, I don't see how this card's really going to help other than through squad building challenges. He's not going to be used too commonly in weekend league teams. I'm not saying he can't be because, this guy, again, this card is not terrible. It does have four-star skills. So, again, it's, it's not a terrible card, but it's not like a crazy good one. So I think this is a moderate investment, but nothing you should expect huge profits from if you were to pick him up. Next up, we've got Fabian, who's a pretty similar card, honestly. He does have three-star weak foot and four-star skills as well. He's got stats in very similar places, maybe a little bit more of an attacking player than Vicino, but also a player from 
Calciwa, this one from Napoli, but he's also from Spain, so he gets easier links with Spain. So in comparison to Vicino, I like Fabian better as an investment. Even if you got to pay a couple thousand more coins, I go ahead and take that 84 rated player from Spain. That thing will go up eventually, guys, whether it be from squad building challenges. The fact that it is a good link to any Calcioa teams, it could link to Premier League Spanish guys. It could also obviously link to La Liga players from Spain as well. So that I like as one of the better investments from this team of the week, but again, not the best one. I will get to the best one for sure that I like the most. Eggstein. He's a discard price Bundesliga German player from Werder Bremen. So you can't go wrong when you're getting him for discard price, but how much is he really going to rise into the Bundesliga hype? Now, when do we expect Bundesliga Player of the Month to drop? That's the first question. I think it'll be on Friday, October 9th. And I'm pretty sure it will be because they'll drop the voting on Friday, October 2nd, and a week after will be the actual Player of the Month. Now, that's how it works for EPL. And given the fact that the first, the first month of Bundesliga, don't, don't really count that because international breaks screwed up the dates for player of the month this month i think that on the ninth we should expect both epl and bundesliga player of the month so that's only two weeks from t the day that this video goes up on friday so this is exactly two weeks away so if you're willing to hold this card for a week and a half i think it could reach like 12 13 maybe 14 000 coins but it's not going to be huge profit because there are several other discard bundesliga cards to choose from especially if they drop in the next team of the week as well if there's more in team of the week seven then really they're not going to rise very much and that's what we noticed after the first one so honestly not the greatest investment i don't think that you're going to make a lot of profit if you have extra coins lying around there's no reason not to put into a discard investment because there's no risk but again the reward is unlikely to be very large very unlikely especially given the fact that the winner of player of the month is either going to be Paco Alcacer or it's going to be this guy on the bench jo Jovic for Frankfurt who is actually most likely and we'll get to him in a second Next up, we've got Duffy. Now, if we're going to go with any discard investment 81 rated from this team of the week, it's Duffy. It's not Eggstein. It's Duffy because Premier League informs are always more expensive. The cheapest Premier League inform for the last team of the week or the last player of the month, Hazard, was like 22,000 coins and it was like Xhaka and Petr Cech and those guys. Even considering that they were some lower rated ones, the cheapest ones were like 20K. Ryan Fraser even rose a ton. So I think that that means that Duffy is also going to rise too to, at bare minimum, 15,000 coins going into the hype of uh, Premier League Player of the Month. And we always sell into the hype. We don't really wait until the actual SPC drops because then we're putting our profit in the hands of EA. And we don't want to do that. We don't trust this company with our coins. I don't trust this company with freaking 100 of my coins, let alone 100,000 of them. So, yeah, I would uh, always sell into the hype with this, but right now he's going for near discard. Now, I know 11K, 11,000 coins isn't necessarily discard price, but certain times of the day, you know, Friday at like 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern, like something around that time, there's always a lot of cards on the market, and you can sneak some on bid for very cheap. You can snipe them pretty easily. Uh, no matter what console, they're pretty easy to get midday for a decent price. So go ahead and try to do that. If you have to pay 11K, I mean, do it. Pay 11,000 coins for the card. That's that's worth 11K, especially given the fact that I do believe it'll be around 15,000 coins. So this is one of the most talked about informs. Definitely one that has the most questions around it. It's a second inform. It's Lala from League One. Now, at this point, this is the best right back in the league and it also might be the best French right back as well because Juan Pavard is a center back and when you think about right backs from France you don't really get too many ideas maybe Mounier uh actually no he's Belgian he just plays for PSG so yeah I mean this is definitely the best French uh, right back unless I'm blanking on somebody right now but he's got 86 pace 80 defense 83 physical 83 dribbling 81 passing this is a weekend league card that you will probably see quite commonly honestly you could see this card linked to icon cards i think that this is definitely a weekend league meta card and it's like thirty thousand coins right now the only issue with this card is the fact that it isn't from the greatest team strasburg doesn't really link much so if you're going to link this card it's got to be with an icon or it's got to be with another you know french players all over the place and to be fair french squads aren't too uncommon so honestly i do like this as another moderate investment don't expect to make you know huge coins on it but i'd say it's one of the better investments from the team of the week moving on to Kaderabek. it's a very similar to the eggstein a little bit of a higher rating plus he's a right back and again right backs in terms of sbcs always go up the most in terms of 
all the positions other than left back and right back. Left back and right back. Full backs in general. Always the most expensive for SBCs, whether it's 82 ready cards, 83 ready cards, 84 ready cards, informs, man of the match, scream cards, anything, whatever it is, right backs and left backs for SBC investments, always a go, always a go. The reason I didn't mention that for Lala is because nobody's submitting this card into a squad building challenge, but the only reason you're picking up Katara back, really, is for squad building challenges. Not to say he's a bad card, because he's really not. 84 pace and 82 physical, it's not the best right back in the league, but he's decent, definitely usable, but with being from the Czech Republic, not really getting the greatest links, you'd have to make a Bundesliga squad or link him with a Hoffenheim player. It's not the greatest card. You're not going to see it in that many weekend league squads like you would with Lala. So it's definitely a Bundesliga like player of the month investment, and I like it better than Eggstein just by a little bit. Next up, we've got Pickford, 85 rated. And I haven't heard too many reviews on this card yet, but being 85 rated, being English, and being Everton does add a lot of value to his card. The only issue is he's a goalkeeper. I never like investing in goalkeepers, even if it is as appealing as this Pickford card. There's just always other options at goalkeeper, and there's never really any, you know, correlation to the rating of a goalkeeper and how they play in-game. Like, honestly, a couple years ago, Butlin was the best goalkeeper in the freaking game, and he was like 81 rated. It doesn't really matter, and that's why I don't really like goalkeepers as much for investments. So, he is a decent rating from the Premier League, but eh is what I'm going to say about that card. So we're going to go through the bench a little bit quicker because, you know, there's a lot of cards on the bench that are like 81 rated and not the greatest investments. Pacheco is from La Liga. And the next question probably that you guys are asking in the comments below is, what about La Liga Player of the Month? Weren't we supposed to see a Player of the Month Messi? Now, here's the thing. I guess we might have had a chance of seeing a Player of the Month Messi, but we never saw any cards in the database that represented Player of the Month La Liga. So I was always skeptical about it. The only thing we saw was a leak from La Liga in EA saying that they were collaborating for Player of the Month, which makes you think, yeah, they'll probably do an SBC for them, but we haven't seen it yet, and it's October 25th. So if they're about to do an, um, if they're about to do a September Player of the Month for Messi uh, on Friday, the day that this goes up, then we might see it, but I doubt they're going to do it. I don't know. Maybe they're saving La Liga Player of the Month for next month. I have no clue, but given the fact that he is discard, it's not really a risk, but it's kind of the same as Eggstein, plus he's a goalkeeper, and I don't like investing in goalkeepers. I'd much rather invest in this De La Bella, even though he's one rating lower, he's a left back, and he's still discard. I would I would invest in him way before I invest in Pacheco. And that's including the fact that De, De La Bella isn't even from La Liga. He's just Spanish. He's not even from La Liga. He's from the second, second league. And I still like De La Bella uh, better. If he was from La Liga, he'd probably be a couple thousand more coins. Even though he is an absolute trash card. But he does get links in squad building challenges. Ladero, terrible investment. Don't pick it up. Alaman, what league even is this? I don't even know. Alaman is from Saudi Arabian League. Why? Well, I don't know why you invest in that. No, don't don't pick that one up. Ililich. Uh, whew. all right. So right wing from Slovenia doesn't get any links there, but is from the Italian league. He's okay, but I don't like it because 72 pace, 67 physical for a winger. Not that great. Not that great. I'd stay away from it. Other than the fact that it's an 84 rated card, if he ends up being like the cheapest 84 rated in the game, go for it. But right now, again, in terms of 84 rated from Calcioa, go with Fabian before you go with Alilich. Fabian way before Alilich. Sala, he could, he's, eh, nah, not really. Now, Jovic, you, you might expect me to just skip over this card as well, but no, Jovic is my favorite investment from this team of the week. It's my favorite. He's on the bench. Very overlooked, guys. You can get him on bid for nine. No, don't ignore that card. Somebody's buying coins. Um, you can get him on bid for ninety nine hundred easily. Ten k on buy now right now. You can get him on bid. There's there's one for ninety nine hundred. You can get this card for literally discard price. This guy has a ninety five percent chance of winning Player of the Month Bundesliga. This card will rise so much into the hype. It's unreal. This card is a perfect investment. He's no risk. He's going to win Player of the Month unless Paco Alcacer gets like a brace or a hat trick in the game against Erder Berlin this weekend. Jovic is going to win Player of the Month. 
I don't know why this card isn't already higher than 10k, but you guys need to be picking up this card, and I might pick up a couple before the end of this episode for sure. And actually, I can go and guarantee I'll pick up a couple of those cards. I love that investment. Next up, we got Closa. Nah. Uh, Zhang Long. Nah. I mean, that might be a good investment long term for Lunar New Year, but we'll come back to that in a couple of months. Dimita, Onuachu, and Kokorin. Just go ahead and ignore those cards. So that's going to be it for my Team of the Week 6 analysis, going through every card and describing why I think they're a good investment uh, in comparison to others and which ones I think are my favorite to pick up. So the next segment of today's video is going to be based around UCL cards. In our last episode, I went out and picked up a ton. And in this episode, I picked up a ton more. I've got a lot of UCL cards. Now, there's some on my transfer list. Those are only duplicates of ones I already have in the club. And we picked up pretty much every single card other than a few, and I'll show you those few, for 950 coins or less. Now, Glick is one of those few, Casillas is one of those few, and Zanzi is one of those few. I picked up that in Zanzi for 7,300 coins just as a card that I think will go for like 9k, and I'll go ahead and bid on this card too if that ends up going for pretty cheap. Um, Peace Check is another one, Rudy is another one, um, a couple of those guys on the first page, but that's about it. The rest of these guys, every single one of them, 950 or less. Like this Tadic card, 950, already going for like 3k. Zielinski, Akinfeev, um, Andre Almeida, that's a great one, guys. Look at this card, I got it for 950 coins. He's going for like six or 7,000 coins right now. He's, he's going a little bit back down. Uh, in comparison to what he was earlier, he was a lot higher earlier, but still, like 5,000 coins, even if he is 5K, that's still so much profit for a card we got yesterday for 950. That's a great deal. Uh, Fernando, it's another one, 1,000 coins. Farfan, 1,000 coins. All these are rare cards too. So, here's the deal. There's two things that can happen to these cards. Now, given the fact that these are rare cards, they can't really get lower than like 800 coins. That's the lowest they can get. So get, getting them for 950 is no risk investment. But let's talk about the guys, which is a lot of you, that picked up higher rated cards. Players like the Nzanzi that I showed you, that goes for over 7,000 coins. Players that are on this team right here. These are just some examples of these cards, these UCL rare uh, cards in here. So all of these guys that go for over 10,000 coins, over 100,000 coins on the bench, all these guys on here. You guys probably picked up some of these faces, and if not, you might have picked up similar cards of similar prices. With that being said, there's two things that can happen. I need you guys to pay attention to this part of the video because it is uh, it is quite important for your investment, and, and it comes down to your decision. I'm not going to make the decision for you. I'm just here to help and give you guys a good idea on what's going to happen. One. If there isn't an SBC that gives out a UCL card, like we saw the other day on Wednesday, if there's not another SBC that gives out those UCL cards for another week and a half, two weeks, these cards are only going to go up. They can only rise in price. But if there is an SBC for some reason, I don't know why, because there's no UCL next week, there's not going to be UEFA marquee matchups, and they might just randomly drop a UCL, SBC, kind of like they did Wednesday. I mean, that wasn't really UEFA marquee matchup related. That was just, you know, happened to be on a Wednesday during UEFA, uh, you know, during UCL. But they could do it at any time. This is EA. They can do whatever they want with these UCL cards. If they were to drop one next week, maybe, these cards will crash like you've never seen before. These cards will plummet for multiple reasons. One, the supply from packs goes up. You know, it goes up by a ton because there is no supply from packs right now. The only supply is people having it already in their clubs. There's no UCL SBC anymore. That ended at 6 p.m. UK on Thursday. There's no more supply there. But if you combine the supply from the packs on top of the panic selling from the thousands upon thousands of people that have invested in these cards, oh my goodness, this will be the biggest crash I've ever seen for freaking UCL. You'll, you'll ever see for UCL cards for the rest of the year. If that happens, now, that's only if it happens. And what is the percentage I'd give it? If I had to guess 80% chance they don't drop something, 20% chance they do. But if they do, if they do, you are screwed. So be careful because there's a 20% chance you lose a lot of coins. So the options are, do you go ahead and take the profit you've already seen or do you get greedy with it and hold it for a little bit longer? That's up to you to decide guys. I don't work for EA. I don't know if they're going to drop another SBC. And our investment relies completely on that. 
So I can only give you the scenarios on if they don't and if they do and tell me what happens if they don't or if they do. I can't tell you if they will or if they won't. That's up to them. So that is for that segment of the video, the UCL cards. Again, if this is helping you guys out, make sure to drop a like on the video. Let's finish it off with Scream Investments. I've stressed this in the last couple episodes. Right now, Scream cards, way low in price. Now, my favorite investment out of all the Scream cards right now, Rafinha. Rafinha's super good. He's like 12,000 coins right now. He's not that much. He's like 12.5 thousand coins. He's a right back. 78 rated, not the greatest rating, don't get me wrong, but Brazilian and Bayern. And the stat boost right now, he does have a 90 passing and 90 physical. But if he got like pace and defense, or even pace and dribbling, oh my goodness. If he went up to 90 pace in general, he'd be the best right back in Bundesliga by a long shot. Plus he links with everything. He's a perfect link to Bayern plays. He's a perfect link to Brazilians, you know. That works well. If once that once that change comes, he's gonna go up a lot. This is one of my favorite investments for that. And on top of that, he's only twelve thousand coins, which means that if there is a Scream Card SBC, which there still is a chance for that. Now, why would they actually drop a player like Abdul Rahman or or freaking Ochoa? Why would they drop Ochoa into the Scream SBCs, knowing that this card is really bad? Like it is not a good card. It's in the Belgian league. Mexico doesn't really link with any good center backs other than maybe Moreno, but that's about it. Nobody's really making a week in league squad around Moreno. I'm trying, trying to, don't take offense to that, but like nobody's building a squad around Ochoa. This card is not going to be used in any team. Nobody uses this Ochoa unless they're strictly making a Mexican team, which is quite rare. I mean, you'll see it every now and then, but that's quite rare to see that in comparison to the supply there is. He ain't know that. Why would they drop? They Do they want this card to be just discard price for the rest of the year and have no point at all? Or are they planning on dropping a Scream card SBC? It could be repeatable. That would cause this card to skyrocket in price. Because there are some of the better Scream cards like Diego Costa and Mandzukic, etc., etc. There are some good Scream cards that you would get out of that SBC. So if they did do an SBC for that, it would go up in price. If... They did an SBC for that. A lot of ifs with these SBCs because EA have been very unpredictable. But they have been dropping a lot of squad building challenges. They seem committed with their live content that they promised in FIFA 18 that they didn't do. They have been doing it in FIFA 19 so far. So what we could expect is maybe a 40% chance is what I'm going to go ahead and throw out there on a chance of a repeatable Scream required squad building challenge. A repeatable Scream SBC where you would need to submit two Scream cards into the SBC and then maybe like an 83 or an 82 rated squad with it and then you get a Scream player out of it. Now, unfortunately, there's no like Messi or Ronaldo Scream player, which kind of hints towards maybe they're not going to do that because there isn't really like one crazy good Scream card. There's only just a few that are a few hundred thousand coins. So it's it's just kind of like, what are you going to do with that? But if you're picking up that Rafinha card, you're double dipping as opposed to players like Ochoa and Kalu. Well, not Kalu essentially because Kalu is actually still a decent card. But Abdul Rahman and Ochoa, those aren't really good cards at all. Can't really link Abdul Rahman with anybody. He's from United Arab Emirates and he's from the Saudi Arabian League. The only card you could link that with is um, that, that striker that gets a team of the season like every year. I can't remember his name, but he's on that team. That's really the only link you can really get. So with that being said, I don't really like Ochoa and Abdul Rahman when Rafinha is this cheap. And the reason I picked up all these Ochoas and Abdul Rahmans for this cheap was when Rafinha was like 18k. Now that these cards have dropped in panic selling, so many people are panic selling these cards because nothing has been used for them yet. They haven't had a stat change. They're not going to get a stat boost. These cards like like Kalu, like they've got 90 pace and 90 dribbling already. Next, they're going to get like shooting and physical which won't be bad or defense and passing once he gets defense and passing that's the worst combo ever uh he'll only go down in price because of that so with that being said you've got rafinha as a crazy good investment another great investment i really like right now is pepe i bought him way early don't get me wrong i bought way too early on pepe so i'll lose a couple of thousand coins on that card but if you're picking him up right now guys pepe is an 86 rated card he goes for like 18,000 coins right now, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at his price before we end this episode. Take a look at Pepe's price. He was like 17K earlier when I checked him. Now he's gone up a little bit more. I did kind of hype him up on stream saying I liked him as an investment. Let's say he's 19K normally right now. He was like 17 and a half uh, about an hour ago. So he'll probably go back down midday during Friday when this goes up. 
but he's got a pretty good stat boost on defense and physical. That's not a bad stat boost, but you also got to consider the fact that defense and physical are already his best stats. They're already well over 80. The best stat boost would actually probably be like pace and dribbling or pace and passing would probably be where you want the stat boost on Pepe. So whenever he gets that pace boost, no matter, no matter what it's linked with, that's the best stat boost for Pepe. But he's also 86 rated. So there's not that much risk with it. Why? The cheapest 86 rated in the game is Ederson. Ederson's the cheapest 86 in the game at just about 16,000 coins. So if he's 16,000 coins and Pepe right now is 19,000 coins, what you're risking is about 3,000 coins at the most per Pepe card. Because even if Pepe isn't used in any SBCs, doesn't get a good stat boost, EA just completely throw this screen promotion in the garbage. They've done that before in the past, not with the screen promotion, but with other promotions where that's like, oh, scream, it's, it's, a, it's a great promotion. I'm so ready for this promotion. And they do nothing. They do nothing with the cards. Uh, for example, Movember in FIFA 17. Movember. Everybody was hyped up. Ooh, an Ebra Movember card. These, these, these look cool. These will be used in SBCs or something. And they did nothing. And they just ruined the event. It's like, okay, we're going to drop these and then ignore them forever. So it was, you, you know, they've done it before. Will they do it again this year? I don't know. But even if they do that, even if they completely ignore Scream cards for the rest of the year, for at least these next couple months until foot miss or something. The most he could drop is like 3,000 coins. Because then he'll just be used for like Icon SBCs or high rated Player of the Month SBCs. Like Aubameyang is probably going to win Player of the Month um, for, for Premier League or something along those lines. So, you know, now that we mentioned Premier League, let me go and show you guys Foot Chief again um, real quick. So pl Premier League Player of the Month uh, right now, Aubameyang. Uh, there's only going to be three games, by the way, because we had international break at the beginning of October. Uh, four goals, one assist. He's kind of in the lead for, for player of the month, for sure. With five contributions in just two games with an 8.53 match rating. Now, he doesn't have a man of the match, which kind of puts him a little bit behind. But still, uh, if it ended now, he would get player of the month. We got one more game to go. Martial could still catch up. If you got a brace in the next game, uh, Manchester United, I remembered who they played, but now I forget. But if he were to get like a brace or a goal and an assist with a man of the match, you know, he's already got a man of the match, that could put him ahead. But you also got to consider Arsenal have two wins, no losses, no draws, while Martial is 1-1-0. One and one and oh. So that's also something to take into consideration. Uh, again, this website is Foot Chief. Pretty good website in terms of player of the month uh, tracking. Um, JD10, that's Jack Dresser, isn't it? That guy's, uh, that guy's always in my stream. What up, Jack? Uh, Dex is also already, uh, Dexterity, he's also on my stream too. Anyways, besides the point, Paco Alcacer, four goals, zero assists, but take a look at Luka Jovic, he's who we talked about, seven contributions in two games with a 9.0 match rating and two men of the match. I mean, that's a freaking player of the month if I've ever seen one. The only way he doesn't win player of the month is if he drops a goose egg in the next game and uh, Frankfurt lose. Let's say Frankfurt lose, they don't score a goal, all right, and Paco Alcacer gets a brace against Herther Berlin. That would be a big win for that'd be a very big win for Dortmund. I think that would probably shoot Paco Alcacer above. Even if he had one less contribution, Paco Alcacer would still win because they'd be three and zero. That he would have done great against Hertha Berlin. But that's still if Paco Alcacer does that. So Luka Jovic is probably going to end up winning. You can count Lua out. He's not going to win it. Sabitzer's not going to win it. Werner's not going to win it. Hoffman's kind of in it with three goals and two assists and a man of the match. He could. He's still got a chance. Jonas Hoffman does, but. Not as good of a chance as Jovic and, and Alcacer. But if Hoffman scored, like, you know, a goal and an assist in the final game, he, he could still have a chance. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. Drop a like for one take and all the way through. I did not make a cut in this episode. And we covered so much in this video. Straight through about a half an hour episode of just straight content. So drop a like. And if you made it to the end of this video, I want you to comment down below in the comment section um, go ahead and tell me what your transfer profit is. Even though transfer profit's quite inaccurate, go ahead and tell me what your transfer profit is in FIFA so far. I would love to know. So let me let me know what your transfer profit is. Mine's about 2 million coins right now. Uh, I have been quite busy. I, I kind of want it to be a little bit higher than that, but this is a long game, all right? It's only one month in. We've got 11 months left. I'll get that up. But let me know your guys' transfer profit down below. Uh, that'll be it for today's episode. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.